So welcome to my short video about reactive context in Angular, what they are, how they differ, and if it actually matters. And I want to start with introducing you to my application. So it's the application that I use all the time. I have here holidays. We don't see here anything because I need to type in a search term. So I type here NO. And then I see here three holidays are found, Norway, Japan, and Reykjavik. If you ask yourself why, I mean, Norway, okay, Norway starts with NO, but why Japan and why Reykjavik? Well, we have here um, innovation. Uh, this, so, so this kind of teaser text is also included in the search. So northernmost and innovation also match this query. That's why they show up here. If we take a look at the implementation, so, then we see here it's a simple component. It's using signals everywhere. And we have here our form where we are calling the handle submit. We have here an asynchronous method. So I'm setting here the loading signal. I'm setting it to true because I'm about to start in the request. Then I'm setting those holidays which might already be available. I'm setting them to empty. Then I start here with my request by using the holiday service. As you see, this request here returns me a promise, not an observable. And then I set it here to false after the loading is done. So, and what I want to do now is that I want to make use of the, reactive, of the reactive behavior of the signals. And I want to have a pretty search. So a new signal, which is called pretty search. We usually generate those kind of derived values by using a computed. And I say, okay, I have my pretty search. So I'm constructing it by saying um, query this search returned this holidays length hits. Yeah. Let's use hits. And I'm going to return pretty search. Obviously, now the pretty search is a signal of a string. And I'm now going to make use of it in my template. So here I say I have a p tag and I say pretty search. Good. Now I go back to my application. We see here Q returns zero hits. And if I now type in a letter N, then the text updates immediately. Also when I type in an O, and if I click on search, then I'm getting here three hits. So far, so good. So that is just that is this reactive behavior which we know from, from the signals already. Now I want to be, I'm very curious. I now want to understand how often this computed here is really executed. And for that, in order to get this information, I'm doing something very, very bad. I'm going to run here a side effect in a computed. And it's only there for debugging purposes. So that's why I say here console debug. And I'm putting in the pretty search like this. Good. Now I can go back. I go to my console, remove everything which I have. I type in NO. We see that the computed is now obviously executed with every input that I do. And then I click on search. We see it says a second time returned zero hits, and then it says three hits. And that's because the zero hits, the second time of the, of the zero hits comes because I'm setting here my holidays to an empty array. Of course, and then the, and then the other one is when I'm, when, I, when I'm calling here the set method. A very important thing to understand is that the reactivity or the reactive um, context, as we also call it, does not come because I'm using a computed, yes, it's a requirement, but the reactive context is there because I'm using the pretty search in the template. The place where I use it, that one counts. That one decides if the pretty search now is reactive or not. So I go here, the page reloads, I type in NO, and we see no, no effect, also no console log shows up. I could also then maybe say, okay, what about if I'm going now to use the, the pretty search in my constructor? We'll have the same result. So I can say here, log. I mean, it is then printed out just once, as we will see immediately. 
So query return to zero hits, but the problem is it's not reactive. It does not react on the, on the changes. So the reactive context directivity comes first of all from the template. So the template is a reactive context. The second reactive context is in TypeScript and that's an effect function. So if I again, if I would remove it here and if I then would say, okay, I have here a log effect, then I say, well, simple effect function, and I'm just calling here the pretty search. I just need to call it, uh, that's already enough. I usually tend these days to assign the effect to a property and not call it in a constructor anymore, because I like it when I'm forced to provide a name for the effect so that I know what this effect is actually doing. Here I can now go back to my application. It has already been reloaded. And if I now type something in, we see that it's still working. Okay. And now I press enter. Yeah, so far so good. I'm going to clear the console and then I'm clicking on search again. And we see no surprise. The holidays have been emptied and then we are getting the three hits again. Remember this. First zero hits and then three hits coming from the effect. Because I make you aware of it, you already know that now something will change if I'm not using the effect anymore, but, in my, but if I'm going to use it now in the reactive context of the template. Yeah. So if I now go back to pretty search, I type in again NO, click on search, so far so good. I clear my console, I click again on search, and then we see it only says three hits and nothing else. I try it again, NO, search, first time it always, it always works, second time, three hits. You can try it on your own. This is not a question of a randomized thing that is determined in this case. It will always be, if you use the pretty search in the template, it will only show the console debug once, but if you use it in the effect, it will show it twice. The reason, reason, although not really an explanation, but I can give you a kind of an understanding where this behavior might come from. The holiday service using a, is using a cache internally. And it says, well, if you have typed already in NO and you redo the search again the second time, then I am returning you the value directly from the cache. But it's returning it as a promise. So it still is an asynchronous task, but it's a micro task in this case. And if it says, well, it's not in the cache, then an HTTP client is, an HTTP request happens. It takes a little bit longer, obviously, but it's not a micro task anymore. And for obvious reasons, it does make a difference for the two reactive contexts if a signal is changed in a micro task or not. Now the question is, does it matter? And here the answer is, no, it shouldn't. That's the answer. If we, think, if, we th if we see it from the perspective of a computed, then this is a derived value. A computed does not have any side effects, so it doesn't really matter if it runs as long as we get the guarantee that the last value that we have, that that one is shown, and we have that. It's not, the question is not that we don't see the last value, the question is always, do we see these intermediate values? And in this case, Angular is doing quite a good job we, it's really optimized for the front end for the rendering. So we can be, uh, we don't need to be afraid that our users might see something which kind of yeah, an intermediate step. The users will always see what they are supposed to see. They will always see the current status of our state of our signals. It is a different story though for the effect. If you say, for example, well, in this case with the effect, I was lucky that the effect kind of covered the, um, the, the, the empty array here. But what if I would then say, well, the cache in this case is returned, I don't know, still as a promise, but the promise internal resolves with a window set timeout. Then I have something like a macro task. Does it still work there or not? Um, if you find yourself thinking about these things, if you find yourself kind of saying, I have the requirement, that every change that I have in my signal 
is something that I have to be aware of, that I need to process, then you're using the wrong tool. Because what you have to do then is that you have to use RxJS in this case, especially if you need to be able to, do, to manage race conditions. And if you say, well, multiple asynchronous, asynchronous events are coming through, then you need to use RxJS. But if you say, I don't care, I don't care as long in my console log, I see at least the last value from my pretty search, then use an effect. That's the perfect use case then. One last thing, if you find yourself using an asynchronous task, then you might not necessarily always need to jump directly to RxJS. From my perspective, it would be perfectly fine if you use an effect also together with an asynchronous task, as long as, well, the asynchronous task is only returning you one value and just one and that's it. And as long as you don't have to manage kind of I mean, race conditions, which you don't have if you only get one value back. But in this case, that's not the matter. And if you would say, okay, I'm happy with the pretty search as it is, as, as long as in the console log it shows up some value, uh, then go with the effect. But if you say, no, 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 I need to catch all these intermediate steps, then don't use the effect and please go um, with RxJS in that case. And that ends the video. So if you want to know more about signals, I've made a, a larger video about it, but much more detailed, lasts almost two hours, but I didn't explain there the difference between the reactive contexts. Yo, so that was it already. If you have any questions, I guess there might be some, because the discussion between RxJS and Effect is quite a, a heavy one. So please um, add then your feedback, your questions in the comments below. Would be happy about them but of course also be happy if you like this video and if you would subscribe to my channel and i would say again thanks for watching and see you in the next video goodbye